Hi, I'll talk a bit about composite measures because they do come up from time to time and they, they can be interesting. Now things to think about as uh, we're looking into this are how are different components combined to form a composite measure? So how do, uh, you know, aside from the basic definition of a composite measure being something that's made up of a, uh, a number of other measures the question is, well, how do you aggregate everything to get your final result? And are there such a thing as multi-component measures that are not aggregated? That's, could be. Now here is a conceptual map of a composite measure. Um, I won't try to go through it all. You can have a look at it in, uh, in your own good time. The whole idea there was uh, to put together this uh, conceptual map so that, so that uh, it, we, we, sorry, we were writing a, an international standard at the time and there was uh, considerable debate about just the terminology that was used. So putting together a conceptual map enabled everybody to agree on what, what we should name the various concepts and how they related to each other. So there it is there, you get, you get the construct in the middle, which is the measure itself, and you have all the things coming around, uh, around this. Um, so that was what it was. Now, conceptual, uh, sorry, composite measures are multi-item scales. So it's a measure, the same as anything else, or it's a measurement scale, the same as anything else, but it's made up of multiple other measurement scales. And that, I guess, is where the problem lies. So they're constructed of uh, a combination of um, reflective measures and formative measures. Now these can make a difference. They make a difference in, in the kind of things that you can do. Reflective measures reflect something that um, some concept of interest so when when something is present you get various symptoms of that thing being present and these symptoms are, are the reflective measures of the thing itself a formative measure is a measure made up of a number of other things uh, so the the causal direction is the other way you you get the formative measure is a reflection of the things that make it up a reflective measure uh, is reflected in the things that make it up, or reflected in the various symptoms of it. So we'll talk a bit more about reflective measures in some sort of detail. Reflective measures are measures of the effects or the outcomes that would be observed if the phenomena were present. Um, I guess um, uh, I'm looking out the window at the moment, and I guess one of the um, one of the reflective measures of the fact that it's, it's daytime is that there is more light. So if you looked at the light, uh, you could reasonably deduce that it's daytime. So uh, there are other other symptoms of it as well. During the day, the temperature rises um, until midday, and then it falls a bit. Um, what else would be? be? Um, I'm sure you can think of a few. There, it's usual to use these measures um, of more than you normally have and, and measure several different effects of the thing of interest. Right? So you have several different reflective measures. The reason for that is to have greater confidence in the result. Any one of them may or may not be quite as accurate as you might like. But if several of them are present, you can, you can have a certain amount more confidence in the presence of the, the, the base cause of it all. So they're usually used in, in um, models. Now the degree to which the measures reflect the um, cause, the phenomena, is, uh, is itself measured by the degree to which they all vary in the same way. Um, and this, there is a test for it, it's called the Kronbach Alpha. And I guess the colloquial way of putting it is that all boats go up and down on the same tide. So, if, you know, the elevation of the boat is a consequence of the tide. If the tides in, the boats go up. 
if all of the boats are sitting on the same tide, then they'll all go up and down at the same time. So if all of the uh, if all of the things you're measuring are varying in the same way, there's likely to be a common cause, and the degree to which that's true is measured by the convex alpha. The last point there is that usually the number of measures that are used uh, is determined by the discriminatory power of um, the combination of them. Usually with measurement, it costs a lot to gather the data, so you don't, you don't want to gather more data than you have to. Um, so the, the least number of uh, reflective measures you need to take is good. And I guess the, uh, the problem is then determining which of those potential symptoms are the best indicators of that reflective measure and how many of them you need to, to, uh, to take. Reflective measures, that diagram there explains it. You get the phenomena of interest, which is the, the one at the top, and you get the symptoms down the bottom. The changes in, in the phenomena, so if the causing phenomena changes, the reflections of it will also change. The underlying things are the symptoms, not the causes. Formative measures go the other way around. Formative measures are constructed of a number of separate and independent phenomena. The item of interest has several attributes that contribute to an overall characterization. Right. Now this is particularly true in um, usually in finance or um, you know, big constructs like um, productivity or uh, profitability or um, you know, social welfare. I think uh, one of the more interesting one is the, the Bhutan measure of uh, happiness, uh, which is a, in many ways a construct. Uh, you measure several different phenomena and you construct the measure uh, of these different phenomena. So the item of interest has several attributes that contribute to an overall characterization. Um, in, in, uh, specifically in research, the one I picked on was the measure of service quality, where the, um, the people who proposed the measure of service quality had a look at services and said, well, what aspects of services are going to matter and what aspects of services or what attributes of a service should we measure in order to get some some overall combination of it all? So they de devised this measure called SERQUAL and uh, and put it out there. And there's been a debate ever since about whether that one or a different one ought to prevail. And so far, SERQUAL seems to have uh, uh, been reasonably well accepted, and, and it goes. Another one that uh, you might know about the IT industry was uh, Hofstede's measure of um, national, different national cultures. Now Hofstede worked in IBM at the time, and at that time IBM was represented in a whole lot of countries from around the world, and for whatever reason, uh, Hofstede wanted to go know about national cultures, and he, he took a lot of information and distilled it down to, um, I think originally, uh, four or five um, characteristics, uh, scales on which things might vary. Um, and when he dealt more with Asia, he added uh, another one, which was the uh, long-term view of things. Um, different nations take a longer or shorter-term view of, of events. But Hofstede's measure of uh, national cultures is another example of a multi-item scale. Now the formative measures, the diagram for formative measures you can see there, um, measures are viewed as a cause of the construct of interest. A construct is a composite variable formed or reduced by a combination of the measures, and each measure captures a specific aspect or specific attribute of the measure. And because the measure represents different facets of the construct of the main, um, they need to be um, highly correlated. Now, where this can get into trouble is when you are aggregating things. By aggregating, you're combining them all, okay? Now, with reflective measures, because they all are reflecting the thing of interest, you can take, you, you can reasonably take the arithmetic mean 
um, as a measure of central tendency of the phenomena of interest, and you can aggregate things that way. When you're dealing with formative measures, there isn't any centre. There isn't any, you know, central, the measure of central tendency doesn't make any sense at all. And so what you're left with is how do you characterise these things? Do you simply add them all together? Are they all numeric? Uh, in which case you add them all together and you, you get the sum. Well, that, that's fine, but what do you do with the sum? Because you, you could add them together and get um, a very lumpy measure. Like you could get a, a sum that adds to, say, 5, and yet another sum that adds to 53. Um, okay. Now, what's happened? Uh, so aggregating um, formative measures is usually done by a geometric mean, which is the... Um, the, the root of the powers of them all. Uh, so it's the nth root, the product of all the factors raised to the power of their weights. Um, you're getting into heavy mathematics. There are a number of different potential measures or different potential um, aggregations of these things, and I won't go into them. Uh, it is heavily in mathematics. If you're dealing with formative measures, you'll have to go and deal with it. Experts disagree with the need for such rigor in all circumstances. No. Um, again, story from um, story from standards. Uh, there's been a considerable debate about um, formative and reflective measures in um, process assessment because it happens that the measurement model, some of them are technically their formative measures, and some of them are reflective measures, and. Uh, Quite strictly, we can't take an average of the formative measures, but we're dealing with, um, I think, two two different attributes of something. I think, oh, why do we need this this discussion? Um, but it has been uh, quite a discussion, and uh, there has been considerable debate about how you should aggregate these things. Where it became more important with the um, process assessment is when you have multiple assessments or multiple instances of assessments in the one organization. Say you're doing um, assessing across different divisions of the organization or assessing across different times. So you, you might assess now and you might assess in six months or 12 months. Uh, how do you combine them and you know, how do you get meaning out of that? Put that aside. Um, when it comes to um, a multi-item scale, there are several validity concerns you have to deal with. Uh, the first one is reliability, which concerns the degree of repeatability and consistency of the thing. So any, any measurement should yield reproducible or similar values if it is used repeatedly on the same organizational unit. So basically, if you measure the same thing, it should give you the same answer. Make it for yeah, it's obvious, but this doesn't always happen. Repeatability. Um, can be assessed by analyzing the same measure for the same population at more than one point in time. Uh, so um, you're, you're not measuring the same thing multiple times, you're measuring different things, but you, you, you're doing the same measurement. It should, review, should give you consistent results. Consistency uses multiple measures as uh, of a construct measurement at a single point in time. Uh, so, I mean, if, if if you're using different measures of something, they all ought to give you roughly the same result, one way or the other. Construct validity, this is probably a bigger one, because uh, frequently it's very difficult to prove that the construct actually um, uh, is correct. Um, I won't go into that too much, uh, because it opens up quite a big, um, a big discussion about construct validity and how you construct things. Um, but it's something that in, if you are devising a multi-item scale or a composite measure, uh, you will have to, to deal with. You have to go and have a look at the construct validity of it all. Face validity is essentially, it's on the face of it, it looks right. So this is where you would ask several experts, several domain experts, does this measure look uh, reasonable to you? Content validity. Content validity uh, examines the uh, measures um, the authorization. Content validity examines whether the measures 
capture the construct for which the latent variable stands. Content validity depends on the extent to which measurement instruments reflect a specific domain of contents in terms of the number and scope of individual measures that it contains. So, uh, what are we doing with what we've got? And predictability. I guess this is probably the more important. In order to be, um, in order to be useful, a measure really ought to be able to predict something, and uh, well, that's what you that's what you measured it for. So, how is its ability to predict whatever it is you want to predict? Concurrent validity. Concurrent validity. Um, is assessed by correlating measures and the criteria at some point in time. Convergent validity, uh, the degree to which multiple methods of measuring a variable provide the same result. And discriminant validity is the uh, degree to which uh, the construct, the, the degree to which the construct and its measures differ from one another construct and its measures. So, um, I guess this is, this is a test of how good is this measure. So, the discriminant validity um, is, is a measure is better if it's better at discriminating good from bad or, or big from small. So, that's one of the um, one of the criteria that you or the tests of validity that you might propose for a composite measure. So that's a brief introduction to composite measures. There is a freely available OECD handbook on composite measures. If, if you really are getting into it, uh, just have a look for uh, OECD um, measurement manual, I think it is, and it's freely available and uh, goes into it a certain amount. The OECD is interested in measures of nations. So they're concerned about um, uh, GDP and uh, national growth and other such things, and they've they've found that there's such a problem with different people making up measures in different countries that they've published a handbook to say if you're going to make up a composite measure, this is what you should do. So that's composite measures. If you um, need to uh, work with them, there are some things you have to do.